Good morning, YouTube family and friends. Today, Larry and I are going to take down this oak back here. But before we do, I'm going to give you a quick walk around of the tractor. I have the 51, the Kubota 51. On the back of it, we have that horrible can't, I just hate can'ts. Uh, I guess I'm just not good at it, it's a problem. We have a capstone winch. On this one, it's made this holder for my helmet, my MS-180, and I happen to like this saw because I can actually um, start it. We have a bunch of rope. And today I have this, I think it's a 72 inch, that means it could be bigger, tooth bucket. How are we cutting all the rounds and putting those in? It is a beautiful morning. It's about 65 degrees, low, low humidity. It makes us very happy. This is a beautiful piece of property. 18 plus acres. We sold it to a wonderful family. We close on Thursday. What we don't want and what we've been trying to deal with is to take down all of the dead along the road. Um, because, you know, they have three kids, great kids. We don't want anybody falling hurt. I know the kids are going to be playing and uh, running around back here. And we don't want anything falling on them. We can't get every wood to make her down. But we are trying to at least get the dead down and off the property before they start building. And so I think the first thing we're going to do is uh, clean up this log that's laying on the ground. And then I think Larry's looking at either holding the bobcat against the dead oak or maybe we're going to set up the snatch block in the winch. I know that he has the grapple on and um, that will certainly do the job of carrying the 10 foot buck sections out. So let me see if I can actually set this camera down on top of a stump that we did. And you can watch. Gosh, I hope you don't end up dropping it on my camera. I'm not going to pull anything with the tractor. Okay. I'm going to push it all. All right. Tractor out of the way. All right. Well, you heard that. He's going to push it over. And I'm going to go move the tractor. Enjoy the view.
Sorry about that. I decided my camera is too close to the action. The one thing Larry and I need, that we do not have, and can't make a decision on, is we need some sort of walkie-talkie or communication device with each other. We've looked at a bunch of different ones on Amazon, but we have not been able to find one. I mean, it, you know, there's like 30 new channels. I just need a channel to talk to him and for him to talk to me. And the main thing we need to say to each other is he yells at me, get out of the way, and I yell back, what? So, yeah, we need something or some way to communicate. If you have a system that you use, I would certainly appreciate hearing about it in the comments. Oh, there it's going. Wasn't our prettiest drop, but it is a drop. And we're both safe. And that's what counts. Now we'll go through um, pill bucket or start bucking it into 10 foot sections for his Halverson. Uh, I will clean up all of the tops and save them for my wood bag. And um, this will be something we stack and use next year. So let me go back here and Woo, sorry, get on the tractor and get it up closer to where he, I can use it. I've already got my saw in the bucket.
so the tree came down, came down safely, came down where he wanted it, didn't disturb a lot of the other trees. We're trying to keep the property as nice, but safe for the kids. As you can see, Larry can pick up without any trouble at all, a lot of 10 foot sections. And a message to that wood guy, I was watching your live stream last night. The Halverson works well for us. You guys, your Donna's beautiful, <laughs> but we are not in the business of producing, mass producing uh, firewood. We are retired. We're both in our 60s. Um, we do the wood to keep us fit and healthy. Um, yes, we do wear the helmets because uh, Larry got hit last November. Um, it was a really freak thing. He had taken down a tree. It had fallen. Thank goodness he had his helmet on. It had fallen. And what I have a trouble for him understanding is that the energy from something hitting has got to go somewhere. And it came back. And the tree that he was standing beside was beautifully green at the bottom, but the top of it was dead. And the top of it swung down and hit him in the sternum. And um, he was pretty bad off there for a while. It still bothers him from time to time. Broke a couple ribs, hit him in the sternum. Um, so anyway, he did have his helmet on. It ruined his helmet, That's though that is what probably saved his life. The amazing thing is it never knocked him off his feet. The man is like this incredibly strong ox. There were footprints where it drove him into the ground. But anyway, so we know better now. When a tree comes down, we um, stand still for a while, waiting to see what is going to fall. Another thing you may have noticed or not noticed, uh, I do wear chaps. I've only been uh, using a chainsaw for about 10 years on and off. The chainsaw was a Valentine's Day present from Larry. Um, but last February, this past February, I was over here by myself on the four-wheeler and I was just trying to keep a little pathway cleared. And I have sleep apnea, which is a whole nother story. And, um, I was not alert. I was not um, in a um, great mindset, which comes with a lack of sleep. And I s cut something. I switched the chainsaw, which of course a chainsaw continues to run just a little bit. I switched the chainsaw from my right hand because my arm is getting tired to my left. And as I did, I brought the blade by my see there's stuff still falling <laughs> by my left knee so um i've got a ugly scar what i did was i knew i'd cut myself i uh, turned off the chainsaw put it in the basket on the four-wheeler drove the four-wheeler back over to our property uh, never looking at it i walked in larry was laying in bed i walked in and I said, I need you to look at something and I don't want any lip about it. And he goes, okay. And so I dropped my pants, showed him my knee and I said, never still have not looked at it. I said, do I need stitches? And he said, uh, yeah. So put the pants back on. He drove me over to an urgent care place. They stitched it up, uh, put a big bandage on it. And that afternoon I walked the property with a realtor um, because that's why I was clearing the pathway was for the realtor. Well, and it all worked out for the best because the realtor walked it, got back in touch with us. We didn't even have it on the market. Got back in touch with us in a 
about a week and said, I have someone who wants the property. Now we did not want to subdivide this property, which is what everyone wanted us to do. Uh, we, we didn't want a bunch of houses out here in the woods with us. So it happened to be a family, three children. Uh, he's a crane operator. She does some work with an independent, um, independent group who supplies things for the school. Anyway, they came over, they loved what we had done with our property, and we explained to them that our property looked just like this property, <laughs> completely wooded. We had we cleared every piece of woods to our property. Anyway, um, I think that's about it. Uh, now I will stop resting and I will get back down and I will cut up these pieces uh, for round bags for next year. I will, uh, my job, oh, that's what I was gonna tell you, wood guy. Um, my job is to, you were talking about wood getting stuck, gnarly pieces on the Halverson. Yes, that does happen. But like I was saying, we do not do this for anything but um, a hobby. So first, I always trim all the pieces that Larry puts on the wood processor. Because you're right, those knots and things will get it jammed up. And second, um, I'm usually there when he's processing. So if something comes out, not often, but something comes off the six way bigger than what we want, I pick it up and put it back on the wood processor, or he uses the upside down wood splitter and splits it. We, um, wanted Larry to be inside in the air conditioning during the summer and he has heated seat. <laughs> I know that sounds awful. He has a heated seat in his Bobcat for the winter. Um, I'm okay outside and, and I would prefer that he was inside working and processing the wood. So he sits inside the Bobcat and processes so if there is a gnarly piece like you were asking about last night on your live stream, um, I, I usually just undo it. It's not, it's, you know, it's not a big deal. I can take care of it. Um, it's a very little price to pay for um, his comfort and safety. And um, that's, yeah, that's how we do it. Uh, we're very happy with our, I think it's a 120. I know someone had a 140 they were asking about. Um, but we're very happy with our 120. We are not in a business. This is a hobby. We have decided that uh, we are providing a service to people um, who need wood and they cannot afford to pay what was being charged in this area, you know, a $200 a cord, $300 a cord. Uh, that's just ridiculous. This is a very rural area and there's plenty of woods, just not plenty of people who um, go out and work it. So yes, we brought down the price of the wood. Uh, we sell ours for $115 and we have a, an F-250 uh, with a cage that goes all the way up. Um, Larry made it a dump bed. We never you know, we load it with this tooth bucket. I'm getting Larry a firewood bucket for his birthday. His birthday's this month. Uh, I'm still really undecided. I, I might go with the Bradco. Uh, we've looked at, I've looked at an awful lot and I've let him view an awful lot on the channel, on different channels. But I think I'm gonna go with the Bradco um, and get that. He doesn't, we don't like, you know, dropping all that bark and sawdust stuff on people's lawns. So no one has ever objected. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get him that for his birthday. But um, we take four, it's a 70, this is 72 inches, what we're currently using to load the truck. We take four very, very large scooping, heaping buckets and put it in the back of the uh, 250 in the dump bed. We get to the property, I put the tailgate down. He lifts it, it dumps. Uh, we do not stack, I'm too old for that. When we had the kids, they would stack and generally people would tip them, which was always very nice. 
but we don't stack. We pull in, we are on your property less than 10 minutes. We're in, we're out. Um, we've never destroyed anybody's lawn and we've been kind of wondering about some of the places that people have us uh, back into. But it's all worked out for the best. We're trying to provide a service to people who cannot afford that uh, you know, 280 Accord. I think ours comes out to um, about 85 cubic feet. I'm not a mathematician. In fact, I'm not even good at it. Uh, I was a first grade teacher, so, you know, ask me something simple. But anyway, that is about it for today. Uh, Larry will be back in a few minutes. He is going to finish loading this up. I'm gonna finish trimming it up, finish filling the bucket. We're usually, uh, can take down about a 80 foot, 15 inch tree and have it completely cleaned up and uh, done for the day in about an hour. But of course, you know, videoing this slowed me down. But then again, it was nice because it allowed me to rest. All right, thank you. I really appreciate it. And if you wouldn't mind, could you please like, subscribe, Hit that little bell for notifications and leave me some comments about a i'm looking for some kind of walkie talkie communication system and uh, b if you have a comment or uh, an opinion on a firewood rock bucket uh, i'd appreciate that too thank you and have a good day enjoy the last view of the woods this is ours until thursday and after thursday it goes to a really nice family who will build their forever home and hopefully love it as much as we love our forever home. Have a good day, you two friends, and be kind to each other. Remember, this pandemic is hard on everybody. And not everybody has the escape of someplace as nice as the woods to go to or even as nice as just having a family to go to. See you next time.